Good evening, everyone. Um, I just wanted to come to you tonight while the children are at church having a great time in their fall festival and uh, having a good time with their parents and those workers that are there. You're at home, and uh, I'd like to bring to you a Bible lesson from Hebrews chapter 9. And beginning in verse 22, Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 22. If you turn in your Bibles there, you can follow along. And the Bible says, And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood there is no remission. It was therefore necessary that the pattern of things in the heaven should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. Now listen to this. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures or the pattern of the true, but into heaven itself. Now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor yet nor that he should offer himself often as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with the blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once. I like that. In the end of the world, that he hath appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself, And as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. You know, when we go to this scripture, we find out that there were three appearances of Christ. And uh, these appearances are found in this scripture. Notice, if you will, please, verse 24, where it says in the verse, for Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures, but the true, but into heaven itself now, to appear in the presence of God for us. They're figures of the true on earth. That was the tabernacle, the temple. But that's not where Christ went. He went to heaven itself to offer himself to appear in the presence of God. Listen to this, for us. That's so important. The first appearance that we find in the scripture is his present appearing. He appeared in heaven itself for us. I want you to consider that. The only one that could do it to take care of our debt of sin and present himself as the spotless lamb of God, the, the one that would go in to the very presence of God and he would not only be the sacrifice, he would be the one that would offer himself. The only blood that was shed that is good enough to go into the very presence of God was the son of God, his own blood. And uh, now he is still appearing in the very presence of God for us. You see, Jesus is seated by the right hand of God, the father in heaven itself, having mediated for us a new and living way. A little over 2,000 years ago, he went to a cross and he died for us. But he also went into the very presence of God with his own blood and sprinkled that mercy seat and was able to take care of the debt of our sin in full, in total. And uh, that first appearing is very important. Wouldn't you agree? That appearing is for our salvation. That appearing 
took place and we can be blessed because of that. The only way we have salvation is because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross for us. And then appearing in heaven itself. Then I would like to look at that second appearing. He says in verse 25, nor yet that he should offer himself often. You see, there was only one sacrifice of Jesus Christ. But notice it says, nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with the blood of others. He, he had to continually do this year after year after year. The imperfect uh, could not take care or satisfy or eradicate sin. It only rolled it forward every year until the perfect sacrifice would come and he offered himself on Calvary. And then we have in verse 26, for then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once. If you'll notice the emphasis is on one time. But now once in the end of the world, and that references the, the time Jesus came 2,000 years ago, the end of the world, that references that time, that moment he came to the cross, hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Now, consider this. He appears in heaven for us now as the high priest. He still is, he's still there. He's waiting for the day, and that's not very long, won't be very long from now. We are, we are on the uh, last of the last days, wouldn't you agree? Especially with the world, world situation that we see in front of us with Israel and all the conflict and the war they're in right now. And, you know, these, these are biblical uh, times, always have been, but but now we see, yes, Jesus, first time appearing for us. But now it talks about the fact that he, his past appearing, this, this, this appearing at the cross, it says, now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself, specifically talking about his own crucifixion, his own sacrifice his own um, work on the cross for us. Boy, what a blessing that is, right? So he appears in the presence of God for us now. He, in the past, went to the cross for us and took care of our eternal hell's judgment or punishment. He took it all. And then... You notice it says in that wonderful passage in verse 27, and the reminder of this, listen, that, that this is going to happen to all of us. And as it is appointed unto men once to die. There's a clock ticking for everybody. And um, I'm here right now, and I'm able to share this wonderful scripture with you. There's going to be a day I'm not here <laughs> and we are all getting older and that's a blessing to be able to see our children and grandchildren grow. That's, that's always a blessing, but we can't stay here. We have to leave. The Bible says there's a day of death coming. The boundaries of our life, the time, the days of our life, all of that is going to come to an end. And, um, uh, we have to realize that, that we're temporal and we're on a temporary planet. We are just here together for a moment. But the Bible then continues to say this sobering thought, but after this, the judgment. You see, very sobering is the thought that we will face judgment. Now, it's very interesting because the Bible mentions five judgments. First of all, there was the judgment of sin at Calvary. In 2 Corinthians 5, 21, let me read it for you. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that he, 
we might be made the righteousness of God in him. His purpose for going to Calvary was to pay for our debt of sin so that we could be righteous in God, made right. Uh, Galatians 3.13, listen to this. Christ hath made hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Uh, the redemption of the souls of men, women, boys, and girls, uh, redeeming us back from the curse of the law. He was made a curse for us. And uh, that's an awesome thought. Then there's not only the judgment of sin at Calvary, but then there's the self-judgment the Bible talks about daily for believers. Listen, for believers. 1 Corinthians uh, 11, 31 and 32 say this, for if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. You see, the believer is the only one that, that actually uh, on this earth that has chastening. Our Heavenly Father isn't going to put up with sin in our life. And the result of that, if we continue unconfessed sin, then there will be chastening for the believer. The third judgment the Bible talks about is the coming judgment of the saints. Now, this is different. There's this judgment is very important for us to understand because 2 Corinthians 5.10 says this, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that we that everyone may receive the things done in our bodies according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad, something worthless. Now, please understand, we will give an account. We're not going to heaven to get a spanking. All of that takes place here. Chastening happens here, but the, but the reward or loss of reward is going to take place in at the judgment seat of Christ. And Romans 14, 10, listen to this. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. So special judgment, an accounting of our works on this earth for Christ after salvation will take place. We will stand before our Lord to give an account. And um, then the fourth judgment. Now, this is, a, this is an awful, awful thought. The judgment of sinners. You know, Christ rejecting people on this earth right now, they, they don't have a clue what they're going to face one day. But Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 says this, And I saw a great white throne, John said, and him that sat on it from whose faith, face and the earth, whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and, every, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Now just consider this just a moment. What the lost are going to have to face. A person who rejects the finished work of Jesus Christ and does not appropriate for their soul salvation, they will face certain judgment at the great white throne judgment. And it's not a judgment to determine whether a person goes to hell. No, 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 no. It is a judgment of finality to have irrefutable evidence of every single sin that that sinner has committed will be held against them. They do not have the blood of Jesus Christ. They did not appropriate that in their lifetime. They drew their last breath and ended up in a, plate, in a lake of fire. And now they're brought before a holy God without the provision of Christ. Jesus will be their, not savior, but judge. And that's what's going to happen. 
in the future. And then another future judgment is, is the fifth judgment, and that's the judgment of the nation, the sheep, the separation of the sheep and goats. And that's found in Matthew 25, 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon his throne in his glory and before him shall be gathered all nations. And he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divideth, divideth, divideth his sheep from the goats. So these judgments, the first three apply to us. The last two, they applied to the lost and to the to the nations that rejected Jesus Christ. Did you know whole nations have rejected Jesus Christ? So we come to that thought of the appearances of Christ. Now think about this. He, he is now appearing in heaven for us, seated by the right hand of God the Father. He's there now. He's also found in the past to have appeared for us to take care of our debt of sin. And I got one more appearance of Christ that is mentioned in this text. And notice it. It says here in, and read it. Let's read it together there in um, verse 28. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many and unto them that look for him, that's you and I, shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Now listen, we're waiting for that second appearance of Christ. Now for you and I, it's the rapture, the catching away of the saved off this earth. And he's, he's coming for us. And uh, as I've said, it could happen before I finish this lesson. It could happen before we draw our next breath. We don't know when, but we know he shall appear. And that's the promise of God's word for us. And uh, we are looking for that, that appearance of Christ, the second appearance of Christ to come back and get his children. When God the Father says to God the Son, go get my children, that will be, that will instantly, uh, in the quicker than a blink of the eye, he'll take care of us and remove us from this earth. And we will be in heaven itself with Jesus Christ. Now that's a glorious thought. That's a blessed thought. I want you to know. And, uh, those appearances. So let's go, go back to verse uh, 24 where he says, he says, he says, for Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself. Now to, now to appear, listen, now to appear in heaven for us, in the presence of God for us. I like that. So when you consider this today, I know that it, it, it's a blessing to know that he is appearing right now for us. Then the very fact that the second, the, the second mention of this goes back 2,000 years ago in verse 20, 26, where it says, But now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. That's such a blessing to know that he took care of every bit of our sin. Not one is left to be reckoned for. No, he took care in total of our sin. But he's coming again, that third appearance, that third word appear in this text, that we will look for him when he shall appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Now, for you and I that are considering this today, I hope that this has just prompted you, just uh, caused uh, some uh, uh, pausing in your, in your heart and life to remember that everything has worked together for our good and that he loves us and he gave himself for us and it's all taken care of in the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope you have a blessed evening 
And uh, I hope that uh, we can see you again on the Lord's Day, coming back this Sunday. God bless you. Thank you for this time together. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this time together. Thank you for, Lord, giving us this sure word that, Lord, you are now appearing in heaven for us, that, Lord, you took care by your appearance. You lived 33 and a half years on this earth to ultimately go to a cross and die for our sins. But, Lord, you are coming back, and we know that. We thank you for this precious truth and promise. Bless your people, and, Lord, we look forward to Sunday, the Lord's Day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. And thank you that we can have this time together. Amen.